Okay, in this segment, I will find the force required to hold this semicircular gate, which is hinged at point A, in place. As you see in here, I have the seawater. This is the free surface. So this is basically, if you think about it, this is like pushing this way, right? It's pushing it this way. So if I don't have an F over here, this is going to open up, right? It will just fall over. So here, the water will go over here, right? So I'm, I'm trying to prevent that. So let's find out. This question will highlight a few things uh, important, such as how to obtain a force when there is no real free surface. So this will have imaginary free surface, okay? And it's given that depth into the screen is one foot. And note that I'm using in here British gravitational just for a change. I usually use SI, right? Just for a change, let's do that. And this specific weight of water, this is actually not the seaboard, the regular water is 62.4 pan per feet cube. Okay, let's get to business. So I'm gonna obtain, forget about this in general. First of all, I have to obtain the forces and I also have to obtain the center of pressure. That's for sure. And then the next step is to find this force. So let's go ahead and find the forces. And the approach that I take, as you know, is there will be a force in this direction, pushing it this way, okay? So that's kind of clear. So now the next thing I'm gonna mention may not be as clear, but I would like you to think about it. So I'm gonna say that this FZ over here is pushing it up, not down, okay? So far, every example that I did, everything was pushing it down. So why it happens? Well, let me tell you from the physics, right? If I just, like I said, if there's no force over here, I'll just let it go, right? So then this means that there should be some force pushing it this way to, you know, make it open. Um, I also talk a little bit more when I'm talking about the moments about a point as well, okay? So now, let's write it in here then. And this will be Fy, and that will be Fz pointing as well. So now if I write my FP, my FP will be FY in the J direction plus FZ in the K direction. So now my goal is to find FY, center of pressure for FY. I also need to find FZ and center of pressure for FZ. So I have to do all of them. So let's start arbitrary by FY. So in order to find FY, I will simply go ahead and find this specific weight times hc times a right so let's do that specific weight is 62.4 pound per feet cube right so that's given to me hc what is the geometric center of this shape please not i'm doing this on purpose geometric center of this shape has nothing to do with it in this direction because i'm looking at this vertical projected area so this is actually a uh, a rectangle so the height is two feet and going into the page is one foot okay so I would like you to be careful about it it doesn't really change it in here but still it's important to note that okay and HC will be one foot right because think about it the height is two feet so I divide it by half geometric center or centroid will be right in the middle of that rectangle that will be located one foot below the free surface How about the area well, that's doable as well. In this case, it's going to be pi r squared divided by 2, right? Wrong. That's not the case. As I mentioned, it's the projected area. So the height is 2 into the page is 1. So 2 feet is the height. 1 foot is going into the page. So this is fairly uh, manageable. As you see here, this is twice. So 8, 1, 2, 4, right? Pounds. That's how much force I'm going to get in the FY direction. So now the question is, where is the center of pressure over here? Okay, so actually let's do this. Let me draw this for you larger so we can put some numbers over here. So this is the case that I have, okay? And this is the hinge A, and this is the force that I have over here. And this distance is twice the radius, so it becomes two foot. Now, question is, how this Fy, where is this Fy acting, okay? And basically, if you think about it, I'm interested in this distance, not from the free surface, because when I take a moment with respect to point A, moments with respect to point A, so I'm gonna have this moment arm of this height, right? So, okay, 
So I'm kind of lucky over here. If you think about it, let's do it from the like this uh, pressure prism method. So the pressure here is zero, so it increases linearly all the way to there, right? So like this. So this becomes like a triangle, okay? As you know, in the triangles, or at least I assume you do know that at the triangle, this is will be located two thirds, okay? So this will be located two thirds. So this will be two thirds over here. So this height is two foot. So then let's write it over here. This is going to be located. This will be two thirds of two. So two thirds of two is four over three. And in here, this height will be two thirds. So this was uh, an easier way of doing it. So from here, you can see that I find this distance as two over three foot, right? Okay, so that's good. So far, so good. Fy is, I know, 128 point. Actually, let's go ahead and replace this in my figure. 124.8 pounds. Okay, so the next question is, and this is a little bit more involved, how to find Fc. So there's two methods for this, and I'll show both of them. One student can see this right off the bat, so he can say, you know what, the fluid is over here. So in reality, if you think about it, this is going to be pushing it up over here. And this is going to be pushing it down over here. As this is less, because the pressure is lower over here, so basically it will be going it up, right? And the student can certainly see that due to that fact, I need to obtain the imaginary volume of this shape. Okay, that's student A. When I just explained this to you, you know who you are. You may have understand it already, or just wait for me. Okay, approach is not to take that shortcut, but treat them like this. Let's say that right in the middle, let's point B and point C. For the surface AB. Let's calculate the weight. So basically how this is going to look like is this. It's going to be like this. Go. And then like this. Right? And this will be pointing up. So this will be the surface AB. So this will be from imaginary free surface that I have up here. Right? So this will be pushing it up. This section will push it up like that. Okay. And let's look at the surface now BC. Let's look at the surface BC. So let's write it over here. Surface BC will be, well, that's actually more straightforward. So this is more uh, what we're used to. So it will look like this. This kind of shape. But now this is pushing it down. So then I kind of need to sum them up. If you sum them up, so think about what happens. So I'm going to overlap this guy to here. So it's going to be like that, right? So if I draw this, see this. So this and this is the same, right? So basically, you can see from here what I mentioned before. What I left out is this volume is what I have to calculate. And I'm going to pretend that this is flow of water. All right, let's do it. So now we understand how to do it. So let's continue with green. So FZ in this case will be the specific weight times the volume. Specific weight is 62.4 pounds per feet cube. And the volume of that shape is going to be, it's going to be pi, r is one foot, right? Pi r squared over two though, right? Because it's half of it. And the going into the page or into the screen is one. So if I calculate Fc from here, you can see it's fairly uh, manageable. So it's going to be 62.4 times pi divided by 2. So it's 31.2 times pi, which is 98 pounds. Okay. So now, if I go up over here, so I obtain this. So I, it, I get myself Fp is equal to 124.8 pounds in the j direction. And now, in the positive direction, I will have 98 times the k. So the first component is kind of done over here. But this is not exactly what I'm ask, being asked to find. But it is some significant progress towards the answer. Okay. The next thing is, now I know, let's draw this coin, uh, green. So this will be going up over here. This will be 98. So now the question is, what is this distance? Okay. So now you have to refer 
to the previous segment, right before the segment I discussed a semicircular window, on observation window on a water tank. So I, I write it over there, so I'm going to repeat. If you don't know this, you need to revisit 2.18 in Manson Yon Kokishi. And what you're going to find out is this distance is 4r divided by 3 pi. Okay? Um, now this is, in the previous question, it was like this. Now it's like 90 degree changed. So 4r over 3 pi. So obviously r is 1, so it become 4 over 3 pi for this particular case. So I think I'm kind of ready to take the moments, right? So I know everything. I know this force. I know this distance. I know this force. I know this distance. Now this is the force I'm being as defined, and I know this distance as well. So I should be good to go, actually. Let's assume that this is the positive direction, clockwise, and I'm going to take the moments with respect to A. Why? Because that's the hinge point, right? So if I do that, you can see this. 124.8 times the moment arm is 2 over 3 feet, right? Plus, it's still in the positive, because if you look at over here, this is also converting clockwise. This is also converting clockwise. So now I will get myself 98 times 4 over 3 pi, right? R is 1. In the negative direction, I'm going to have basically this F is trying to rotate this in counterclockwise. So for that reason, that will be F minus F times 2, right? So let's write it minus F times 2. What will be the summation of the moments around that hinge point? Well, zero, right? Why? It's a fluid statics. It's staying right there. Okay. Now I have to punch this into my calculator. And I will get my force as 62.4 pounds. So this is the force that I have to apply to that particular shape to hold this in place. Okay.